Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C. We're going to keep on trucking through the A&P series here. We're going to check out some bones, specifically what we call the leg bones, which would be the tibia and the fibula. So, let's check them out. So, moving on to the anatomical leg, remember, up here we have the femur. I'll put F for femur. There's the two femurs. And you can kind of see an outline here on this x-ray of a patella and another patella. So there, remember, is the thigh. So we want to look now down below at what we would call the tibia. Tibia and the fibula, which is the skinny one right here. Fibula. Sometimes called tib-fib, but be careful of the infamous tibula and fibia, which I saw so many times grading exams over the years. So tibia is the big one. Tibia touches the femur. Fibula is the kind of skinny, wimpy one that's out of the way that doesn't really do much of the weight bearing at all. You can tell just by looking at them. So the tibia is medial and it's always aligned with the big toe or what we call the great toe of the foot, uh, which is also medial. So tibia is the medial bone. It's much thicker and much stronger, obviously. It articulates with the femur and receives the weight of the body from it. So all the weight of the body is being pushed from the femur into the tibia. And then the tibia will transfer it down into the foot. And so it does that by forming what's called a talocrural joint when it articulates inferiorly with the talus bone, which is the very top tarsal bone. So tibia touches talus, the top tarsal. There's a fun thing to repeat five times fast. Now, the fibula, as we said, is the lateral bone. It's the skinny, wimpy bone. It bears no weight in a bipedal human, but it does still have some attachment sites for muscles, which we will go over when we get to the muscle chapter later. It, the fibula, only articulates with the tibia next door to it, as you see here kind of snuggled up, its head's kind of nestled into part of the tibia, and then down again at the talus level, the top tarsal bone, which we'll see in a little bit, it articulates down there too. So the main thing is fibula does not articulate with femur, or the patella for that matter. Okay, so again, I'm showing it on the left side of the screen here, the tib with the fib, right? The tibia with the fibula. The tibia is the big one. And then on the right side of the screen, I have the tibia all by itself. So let's name some of the parts you usually hear about. The condyles. Okay, remember which bone is medial? Well, the tibia is medial. So if the tibia is medial, then that means this sticking up here must be the medial condyle. And because the fibula is always the lateral bone, that must mean the lateral condyle is always sitting here right on top of the fibular head. So there's the lateral condyle. Remember condyle rem reminding us that it's the part that will articulate with another bone, in this case, a femur. And the bone on the right, we can see the condyle here, and we see another condyle here, almost like little ears sticking out of the bone like that. Now, I will show you a trick in a moment, but I know this is the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle for reasons that are a giveaway to me in a minute. Okay, in between those two condyles are several structures actually. On the, the left side of the screen, I'll draw it as ba bump ba bump just like that. It looks like the twin peaks sticking up out of the ground there. Now, you can just call that the intercondylar, right, inter meaning in between the condyles, intercondylar eminence, eminence, something that's emanating or sticking out from something else. So you could call those two lumps together the singular intercondylar eminence. And right here, it would be right in between those two condyles on the right, an intercondylar eminence. Now, if you can see the two lumps clearly, like you can on the one on the left. Sometimes they're called the medial and lateral tubercles of the intercondylar eminence, depending on how specific you want to get. Here, there's a lump sticking out. That's called the tibial tuberosity. I'll just put a T here for the tuberosity. It only sticks out front. You won't see this from the back, uh, but most figures when you're learning this, they'll show this from the front. So we have a potato-like structure, a tuber, 
sticking out tibial tuberosity is as simple as that gets. Now here, like I said, there's nothing much interesting in the middle here, but there is something that's quite sharp. And if you could pick up an actual tibia and feel that, it's almost like an ax blade. It's a very sharp structure. And you can feel your own tibia right now. You can reach down and you can rub your leg bones. Remember, not the thigh, but the leg. And you can feel that sharp protrusion. Sometimes we say that's the coffee table finder because that's what you bang into in the middle of the night. If you're walking your ha around your house in the dark, you slam that thing into the furniture and it hurts. Sometimes we call it the shin. Now, obviously there's not a real bone called the shin bone. It's the anterior border of the tibia is the shin bone. So if someone breaks their shin or has some shin splints, they actually have some problem with the anterior border of the tibia. Now, how I knew that the bone on the right, which side was medial and lateral, is very simply, I saw the hammer, right? A mallet or a hammer, a malleolus, is very similar to a styloid process in the radius and the ulna. Remember in the forearm, we had a radius and an ulna the tibia and the fibula are similar to those bones in structure. They just have different names. So there is the hammer that's on the medial side because it's part of the tibia. It has no lateral malleolus. That's going to be on the fibular side. Now, if I look at the bones on the left of the screen, there's the medial malleolus of the tibia. Here's the lateral malleolus. That is part of the fibula. So looking at the fibula here, again, I haven't isolated it because it's hard to tell sometimes which way is up or down uh, look, uh, when it's by itself. So I've left it connected to the tibia here. So the head of it is right there where you might think it is. So I'll just put an H for head. And the neck is, of course, where you'd expect it to be right below the head, somewhere like right in there. And then the shaft of it is the long part that's sticking down where you might think that would be. So very simple structures here on the fibula. The giveaway that I've already given away is the malleolus, the hammer sticking off of this side. And that's the lateral malleolus. And of course, I can see and remind you that this is the medial malleolus over there. Now, where are those? Well, reach down to your ankle while well, you call the ankle. Feel the two lumps on either side of your ankle, right? The one on the medial side, the one in the midline of the body is the malleolus of the tibia. The one on the outside, pointing to the outside of the body, is a lateral malleolus of the fibula, and they form what we call the bony ankle, which I'll show close up in a moment. So a proximal tib-fib joint, or a tibio-fibular joint, would be here where I'm going to draw in red. Proximal, right, closer to the head of the body, right there, is a proximal tibio-fibular joint. And at the other end would be here, a distal tibio-fibular joint. And then somewhere, I don't know exactly where it begins or ends, but usually here it, it runs along the entire length. That's what you usually see written in textbooks. So I'll just scribble it in like this. Very similar, identical to the way we had in the radius and the ulna. We have an interosseous membrane that spans between these two bones and links them together. And these do not have as much twist and turn as the radius and the ulna did. They had the ability to rotate around each other a little bit. These two bones are very tightly held in place most of the time. There's a little flexibility to them, but not as much as with the radius and the ulna. Now, here's a good shot of what we call the ankle. Notice, I'll just put a T here. There's the tibia. Here's the F for fibula, right? There's the tib-fib. And then this is the talus bone. That is the top ankle bone is what you call it. It's the top tarsal. So remember, a tibia touches the talus, which is the top tarsal. This, of course, reach down to your ankle again and touch it so you know, is the medial side. And we know this is the lateral side out here on the fibula. And those are called malleoli, right? Singular is malleolus. So now we know where we're at. And then we put a circle around here. That's what you usually call the ankle is actually not a structure at all, but a collection of the talus, the tibia, and the fibula. That's what it should remind us of over here. The two malleoli, one from the tibia, one from the fibula, and the talus bone, the top tarsal, for, form what we call the bony ankle. And if I can draw in here in red, if you can follow my little line going around, right in this area, kind of forming a horseshoe shape is called a talocrural joint, which joins the talus or the 
uh, tarsal bone to the crural or the leg portion of the body. Just as a reminder, tibias has the malleolus that's medial and the fibula has the malleolus that is lateral. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching it all the way. Check out some other videos in the series if you want to learn some more. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.